Wilkins and I'm here to introduce the new 800 D3. This is, uh, as the D3 name would suggest, the third generation of loudspeaker to use our diamond high performance tweeter, which is the component here. The 800 is the flagship model in the 800 series diamond range, so it's the premium loudspeaker. This is a $30,000 pair loudspeaker. It incorporates absolutely everything we have as a business, every technology that we know. Uh, this particular model is the outcome of a four-year development project, but in fact the research track that goes back beyond that goes back to 2006, 2007. So this really is the state of the art as far as we're concerned in loudspeaker design. So if you're going to make a statement that says it's a premium loudspeaker, if you're going to make a statement as Bowers and Wilkins that you want to produce the best that you know, you really have to try. You really have to push the envelope. So in this model we introduced uh, over 868 new components, 868 changes. It's a, a slogan that we use internally within our business to promote the model and talk about the technology and the scope of change that we've introduced. And that extends to absolutely everything. So it extends to fundamental component parts like the tweeter assembly, the mid-range assembly, the, the shape of the cabinet, but also to all of the key component elements that make the loudspeaker function, so the transducers, the tribe units. This really is a ground-up redesign and the end result we think is a pretty spectacular loudspeaker. Hello, so I'm Dr. Marcia also. I'm head of research for Bowers and Wilkins. So let's have a look at the various technologies uh, that were specifically developed for that new series, starting with uh, the most important components, which are obviously the drive units. So completely new design for the base units. Um, so new motor, highly linear motor, and, uh, and a very important breakthrough with the introduction of the aerofoil cone. Um, so the idea behind the aerofoil cone is to use a variable uh, thickness profile, allowing us to increase um, the, the rigidity of the assembly, making the, the cone a lot more pistonic so that the cone behaves as it, as it should do. So moving away from the base units, uh, the introduction of the continuum cone, uh, which is a very important breakthrough for, uh, for Bowers and Wilkins. We've been using uh, Kevlar for mid-range cones for a long time, uh, actually since the 1970s, and, um, and it took us a very long time to, fi to find a material which was genuinely better than Kevlar. And, and the work for that specific project actually started in 2007, so it effectively took us uh, eight years to finalize and optimize that design. Uh, so the idea behind Continuum is to truly uh, control uh, the resonances in the cone and really prevent them from, uh, from resonating and, and polluting the mid-range sound. Uh, so finally, uh, the tweeter itself uh, reuses the same diamond dome as in the previous, previous series for a very simple reason. Uh, diamond is still the best material for tweeter domes. Uh, however, we didn't want to stop there, so we decided to redesign all the components around the dome itself. So new suspension, a uh, new mood system, and very importantly, uh, a new uh, enclosure, which we call the solid tweeter body. Uh, very interestingly, the, the, uh, the solid tweeter body uh, start in this form. Uh, so this is actually a single piece of aluminium uh, which is uh, CNC'd from, a, from, from an aluminium billet, creating again a very, very inert component with, with absolutely no mechanical resonances and which also acts uh, like a heatsink, uh, so preventing the tweeter coil from heating up during a long-term uh, power exposure. So moving down, uh, we spend a lot of time as well exploring uh, and improving um, the behavior of all the mechanical components around the drive units. Uh, so the head is a completely new design as well uh, that we call the turbine head uh, for obvious reasons if you consider this profile. So I'm going to drop this down because this is effectively extremely heavy. Uh, so this component is made of a single piece of cast aluminium. Uh, so 70 kilograms, about 40 pounds. Uh, again, optimized to really control and minimize uh, mechanical resonances in order to prevent coloring the mid-range sound. Uh, so single piece of aluminium for high stiffness, uh, combined as well with a combination of uh, tuned mass dampers positioned inside the structure to really damp the remaining resonances. And to finish with, uh, we spend a lot of time optimizing uh, the cabinet structure, external and internal structure, uh, creating hybrid structures of, uh, of wood, uh, birch plywood and, and metallic components, including these pods, uh, which are the mechanical components used to link a base unit chassis uh, to the rest of the curve enclosure. 
so this is obviously not just an aesthetical part. As you can see, this is extremely stiff and thick and, and greatly adds to the stiffness of the assembly. Again, creating a cabinet which is very, very dirt, dead, very inert, preventing colouring the sound of a loudspeaker.